Hey everyone, this is Ryan Mitchell with the TinyLife.com, a blog about tiny houses, tiny living. Today I want to talk to you about data backup because a lot of you have noticed that I've recommended going paperless uh, or digitizing your things to reduce on the number of items you have when you move into smaller spaces or tiny houses. And I realized that I need, if I'm going to be making this recommendation, I need to do a good job about explaining how to backup your data. And a quick story, the reason why I do my data backup the way I do it is because about six months ago, I had my computer crash on me. And it wasn't a big deal at first because I had my data backed up on two independent separate drives. And so I went to the second drive and I went to start copying it and the, the drive died on me completely. Uh, and so I went to that third and final drive and I started having issues with it. And it took me a couple hours to get it, but I finally got my data. And, and it really opened my eyes to the fact that I need to be more diligent. So uh, my approach is going to seem a little bit overkill for a lot of people, but I can show you some ways to make it really easy. And you never have to worry about it then. So the, the thing about data backup is that the reason why most people don't do it is because they're, they fail to change their behavior. And the thing we need to remember is that uh, your computer is going to crash, period. Okay, Just let's accept that fact and move on. Uh, computers fail, hard drives fail, USBs fail, your disks, they get scratched, they, they can burn, whatever. Um, so we want to make sure that however we back up our data is easy, it's redundant, it's automated, and it's robust. And, and so these kind of things will make sure that we're effective with our backup. So next I want to show you kind of how I approach it. Uh, and like I said, this is going to seem kind of overkill for a lot of you, but uh, this is kind of how I approach it and um, you take it for what it is. First I use um, a computer setup called RAID. And RAID is basically just a, a fancy way to organize your computer hard drives. In the case of my computer, I set up RAID 1, which is really pretty easy to do now today, and a lot of more computers are supporting it. And basically all it does is you have two drives in your computer, and it takes the data on one and mirrors it completely and identically to the other, so that both hard drives are always exactly the same. So inherently, you always have your data in two places. And it does this for you automatically. Um, it doesn't slow your computer down. And it happens in the background, so you don't even really know that it's happening. Um, so that's kind of the first thing. And it's, once you set it up, it's really easy. Next, I went out and bought three hard drives um, from Amazon. These are terabyte drives from Western Digital. I bought them for $64 shipped, no tax. And uh, on the first one, I have an automated backup, and then the, the last two, I have manual backups that I do. Uh, so these, these are just kind of an extra layer that I've added, um, and, and since they were so inexpensive, 64 bucks for a terabyte, I just went ahead and bought three, uh, because I know one can fail, two can fail, three can fail. You know, the mantra, one is none, is really important. Um, so one is none, two is one. And that, that really needs to apply to your data backup. Next, I have a lockbox in my home. And I put my uh, hard drive in there. It's pretty much the only thing I have in there. And uh, the important thing is you need to make sure that your safe or your lockbox is rated for digital media. Because not all of them are. In fact, most of them aren't. So just do your research and check that out. Finally, I have a safety deposit box at the bank and uh, that's a couple miles away from my home just in case my whole house were to burn down um, you know that it's taken care of so it, in addition to this I don't really include it but I also have for some really key important things like some of my pictures I have online um, which are stored in California on a server somewhere and and they also back them up there too so I didn't include it here, but just to know, I do do some things like that. All right, so I wanted to show you the, the program that I use. The program I use is called SyncBack, and it's completely free, and it works really well. I've used it about seven months now, so I have some experience with it. And 
uh, I wanted to show you kind of the ins and outs of it really quickly. Um, in order to do make a, a backup, they have these things called profiles, which is basically just uh, a set of instructions to run the backup. And so to make a new profile, you come here, what type, most, like 99% of you guys are going to be doing this. Um, it's just a straight backup. We're going to name it test. All right. And so we, we designate the source where the, the files are currently and where we want them to go. And we're going to say to include everything. Uh, and there's some advanced features and filters and all that kind of stuff. Um, but once you do that, uh, you hit, hit OK and it'll prompt you for some other little things. But it's super easy and that's it. Uh, so I have. Uh, and it can do two different things. It can do a straight backup where each time it makes a complete copy of it. Or it can do what's called synchronization. Synchronization is basically the first time it'll copy all the files. But then every time after that, it will just update the files that have been changed. So like, let's say you work on a Word document. And you've you know maybe added two pages to your Word document. Syncback is going to know that you did that and it's only going to update that single file so that it, the, the backup is ref, uh, reflects the changes that you made to that document or the mp3 or the movie or whatever it is. Uh, so the synchronization uh, will do that. And I do want to note one thing. You'll notice here it says failure. And this is a bit of a misnomer. It's maybe one of the few criticisms I have of this program because uh, th there's failure and then there's what this is and I'll kind of show you what I mean by that. Um, so right here each time it runs for the synchronization um, you get this report and it just kind of gives you all the details and then it shows you any errors at the bottom. Okay and so these uh, five files uh, were basically uh, files that were copied in the synchronization um, but then uh, if you notice it's a temp folder so it basically um, it was just held there temporarily and and then it was deleted and so it's returning an error but I know from looking at these fi files that I know that uh, those files no longer exist and that this is actually kind of a a false positive um, error. So, if that makes sense. So, even though this says failure, I know that it, with just these few errors here, that it was actually, for my purposes, successful. Um, the other thing I do want to sh show you is kind of how I organize my data. And this is back to the making sure it's easy part. So, I have streamlined where all my data is into one spot and so I have this icon called desktop and basically every single thing every single one of my files is within this single folder and I, I've just changed the icon to make it look nicer but it's simply just a folder so I have all my documents my photos and and other things like that uh, within this folder um, I don't keep anything in my what typically people would consider like my documents okay look there's nothing there all of that is consolidated into this um, so that basically all I have to do is take this folder and drop it into wherever I want to back it up and it's a one-stop shop and, and so I've streamlined my data so that I don't have to worry about that um, so those are some basic tips on how to streamline uh, your data backup and how to make it easy on you. Again, my name is Ryan Mitchell with thetinylife.com. It's a blog about tiny houses and tiny living. I want you to check out the blog at thetinylife.com. Thanks for watching.